Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to this week's training. We're going to be showing you seven different ways to speed up your slow VBA code. We've got a list of over 100,000 products. So we're going to be showing you exactly how to get through this list quickly and also how to speed up your own workbook. I can't wait. Let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. We've had a lot of questions on how do we speed up your VBA code. A lot of you, there are so many great ways and techniques that we use to speed up our VBA code and make it really fast. So I wanted to go through some of those methods with you today, some of the best methods. In fact, I've got seven different methods. We're gonna show you, and we're gonna use this uh, amazing little uh, inventory updater. And we've also got a list of uh, 100,000 products and inventory that we have. And that includes a product ID, product types, a purchase amount, sales amount, just some fake data that we have in a, in a markup. In fact, we can set that markup to a percentage so we can get on that. We also have the ability to update inventory either by an amount or by a, a percentage. And of course, this can be we can either increase or decrease that and we can update product types or simply all types of products. So we're going to show you how to do that. And in so doing, we're going to show you how to speed up the code. Most of the work that we're going to be doing is in the developer in VBA. So let's get started on that. And right inside the developer, basically what I want to do is I want to run a macro that updates either all the inventory types or it updates a specific type. So we're going to show you how to do that and how to speed up your code in the process. We're going to be writing this macro from scratch and then we're going to be adapting adapting it and making changes as we speed up the code. So let's get started into the developers tab we go. We're going to go into the visual basic alt F11 will get you there. Of course, if you don't have that developers tab open, you can just go ahead and go into the options. And of course, in the customized ribbon, make sure that you have the developers tab selected here. That'll get you there. Into we go. I've got some brand new macros that we're going to be creating and I've got some existing macro and that's just going to help us time the code. When we're running code, and we're looking to make it faster what i want to do is i want to time the code i want to know exactly how many seconds it takes to run that code so we're going to be using a macro called uh, start clock and stop clock and basically all this does is run the seconds it starts a timer and then it stops the timer and then it displays the number of seconds that it took for that macro to run. And that's going to really help us because while sometimes it's going to be an obvious, sometimes it'll be less obvious how fast, especially when it gets in, into the tenths of seconds, we want to know exactly how long something took. So our start clock and stop clock is going to help us a lot. And we're going to be creating a brand new macro and we're going to call this update products. And this is going to update the cost of those products, the selling price of those costs based on either a percentage or based on amount. So let's start writing that macro and we'll call it sub update products and we're going to start out with a very slow and very basic type of macro that's just going to run through it and basically so what I want to do is I want to determine the last row of the product so dim the last product row as long because I need to get the last row and what is that last row well that last row is going to be on sheet three so we're going to be primarily focused on with sheet three that is our product sheet so with sheet three and of course, let's get that last product row. We need to know that so we can loop through all the products. The last product row equals, I would say, A, and then we got over 100,000. So let's create a type of 999,000. And then we'll do an end XL up dot row. That's going to get us our last product row. Okay, and also what I want to do is I want to run through them for the loop. So we're going to have to determine which row we're on. So dim the product row as long also so we can run our loop. So our loop would look something like this. For product row equals, we're going to start, let's see what row we're going to start on. Start on row three. Let's take a look at that. Our products will start on row three right here. Our first product is here. And of course, our sales amount, that's what we're going to be changing, is in column D. So we'll start at row three. Let's go back into the code. Product row equals three to last product row. And then we'll, next product row. Make sure to close that loop. 
All right, and so what is it that we want to update? Let's just start out really simple and basic. Uh, we won't work in the decrease or increase. We'll just assume it's a, for now, it's an increase and it's a dollar amount. We'll get into the percentages in just a bit. So let's just say we're going to be increasing it by a dollar amount, let's say $10, our product. So I want to increase it. So we know E4 is our increase. So let's let's write something very basic. We are already on sheet three, so dot range. D is the column we want to update and the product row what is that going to be equal well that's going to be equal to itself plus the amount equals itself plus what plus sheet one dot range and what are we going to equal we're going to add in ten dollars in this case and of course or whatever is in e4 so sheet one e4 is what we're going to be adding e4 dot value so we're going to just call this update sales price. Just keep it very, very simple. So I want to do that for everyone. This is going to take a long time. I've got 100,000 at this point. I also want to time this code. So what I want to do is to run this macro. I'm going to start it at start clock and then stop clock. And I'm going to start that before and after the macro. So I'm going to add that in right at the top, start clock, and then end it with stop clock. That's going to create a message box and tell me how many seconds this macro took to run stop clock. Okay, so let's take a look at that. But I don't want to go through all 100,000. It's just going to take too long. If product row equals 1,000, then exit 4. So what that's going to do is just going to exit after 1,000. And then what we can do is multiply that times 100 and determine exactly how long it would have taken to run through the entire list. So let's run this code and see just how long it's going to take. It's running now, and as it's moving through, it's going to go through the first only 1,000, and then we're going to multiply that times 100. All right, so this code ran in 7.18 seconds. That would take over 710 seconds, 718 seconds, well over an hour to run this full code if we were going to go through all 100,000 rows we just did 1,000 so we can figure we can determine that to run this full in its current state it would take over an hour 718 seconds so let's put that in our initial write that down so we can keep track of it and let's call this initial run 718 seconds without any code updates without any code updates all right so we've got that now that's the first let's that's a good starting run and so what we want to do is from here we are going to start making some modifications to code so we can speed that up now the first thing we want to do is you'll notice there's calculations in here that determine the markup and those calculations cause delays in the worksheet because every single change that we actually make we are going to get a calculation we're going to get some type of a calculation and so we can turn off the calculations as soon as we start the code and as soon as we stop the code we can turn back on it so what that basically is doing we're going to take these calculations and take them from automatic and move them to manual just as the macro starts and before it ends we're going to turn it back on to automatic and we're going to do a few things with the application so let's start writing that in the code and we want to do that right from the beginning right after stop clock so we are going to say with application and then calculation okay what kind of calculation equals manual so we're going to take that to manual we're going to do the same thing except turn it to automatic right before we stop the clock so calculation and then we're going to change this to automatic and if you're not sure exactly the way it's done just go down here and just click automatic okay so now we get that so the second the first the first thing we want to do that's going to save us the most time is turn calculations so one we're going to do one calculation manual and we're going to see how much time we'll put the seconds in there and see what kind of savings we've got from that so now we've got let's click update and wow this code ran in 0.21 seconds 0.21 wow that's super fast and that of course is that so if we multiply that times 100 we can get to that but now we can take off that product row so we can do the full 100,000 so we can get the exact number time just so we can see what that would like so now let's update the code and we'll see it's going to run in 18.39 seconds i paused the video there just so you don't have to wait 18 so that code ran in 18.39 seconds so let's put that in there 
0.39. There's a few other things we can do as well that may or may not speed up the code, but it's always a good practice. The next thing I want to do is I want to set screen updating and I want to put that to false and then true again, screen update. So let's write that in code and see if that makes any difference in there. So also with the application dot screen equals false and then we're going to make it back to true again. So we're going to turn that up dot screen equals back to true. Okay, let's run the code and see what kind of a difference that makes. All right, 17.77 seconds. So just a little bit of a difference. 17 points. Let's get okay and put the times in there just a slight amount. 17.77 seconds another thing that we can do point number three is we can also enable events and and enable and disable events events okay and see what kind of difference that makes so let's go back into the code and we will put also enable events equals false and then of course again back to true so we can make sure dot enable events equals true okay so now we've got those three things we'll see what kind of a difference that's going to make click update 17.42 17.4 not too much of a difference for enable events but depending upon the type of your work it could make a, a larger difference so keep that in mind this is something that you can try so just a very very slight difference for enable events Another thing that's going to help us out a lot is using named variables within our code so that they don't have to keep looking back up to memory. So let's do that right now. So we have here sheet 1H4 for the sales price. This is the update. Why don't we change this to the change number? Let's define this and see how that can work. So we're going to dimension here, dimension the change number as double. And uh, let's instead of let's define that change number right here. Change number equals sheet one dot range, and I believe let's take a look at it. And that is going to be an E four. So let's set that up to E four E four dot value. And that's going to be the change number. So we can use now we can use this variable inside the inside the code itself instead of referring back to a specific cell so change number here so we can update it by this and let's take a look at how this now this small change is going to affect our speed click update okay and it ran at 1655 so a little bit of savings there all right so let's put in the variables named variables 16 Nine, one. Okay, so we've got that. All right, now let's make some real changes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use an advanced filter. So instead of going through this entire list, let's go through just an advanced filter, but the first and run an advanced filter based on our criteria so that we can actually save a lot of time. For example, let's do this. First of all, C4. Let's, let's do it without an advanced filter just so we can see the difference. Let's determine our name first, our product type. So we'll dimension that dim product product type as strings we're going to filter by a specific product type and we're going to define our product type here product type equals sheet one dot range and of course that is uh, also c4 so we can set that up c4 dot value that's the product type we're going to run just through our basic and see what kind of time this will take and then we'll do the advanced filter if dot range let's take a look we're looking here under product type b and the row equals product type so we can range b and the product row dot value equals product type then update it. So we're going to only update it if the product type is in red. So for example, whatever product type that we select here in our 
C4, only then are we going to update those products, the sales amount here accordingly. So we can run that code and see what kind, and then we're going to use an advanced filter and compare the differences. So we're going to click update, and that code ran in just 0.82 seconds because it's got a lot less, 0.82. Okay, so now we know. Now we've got a less than a second because we're just filtering. But let's see with an advanced filter how much we can save the time. So let's write some code for that advanced filter. First, we want to set it up. The first thing I want to do is I want to put a row in here. I want to understand the row equals row. And then we're going to copy that down because I want to know when I bring the results over, I want to know the original row, right? So what we're going to do is we are going to bring this information over here, create a criteria. Let's create it here. So what I want to do is put the product type as a criteria here. Let's put it into. And what is that criteria? It's going to be equals right here updater inventory updater c4 that's what i want c4 whatever's in c4 i want there and of course we can make sure that is absolute so c4 okay so that's our criteria in fact we can put in criteria here and what about our results well the results are just going to be basically here so i'm just going to copy those and we're going to bring those right over into p2 paste but just paste everything there so i want the results to start here in p3 so let's create an advanced filter based on the criteria here and then we'll have the results throw here and then based on whatever the original row is in here in v we will then make those appropriate updates in the original so the first thing we want to do is i want to make sure to clear out any previous results so let's go back into the code and do that let's update let's update this accordingly so for example i want to add some variables dim the last result row as long and of course the you mentioned the the result row because we're going to use a four next in the result as long so i want those two things with sheet three i want to actually clear the data so dot range p3 through v99999 and then i'm going to clear that results out clear contents okay so i want to clear any previous results and take a look at that back in the application here right here p3 through v and all the way so we want to clear all of those end results out so that's the first thing we want to do before we run our advanced filter so we've got that now we can we have the last product row we've got that's important we can run our advanced filter now so let's start writing our advanced filter dot range where are we starting our advanced filter? We're starting our original data is where we're going to be starting it, and that is located right here in A2 through G. Make sure we go all the way to G, including the row, A2 through G in the last row. So A2 through G and the last product row, last product row. And we're going to use an advanced filter. And then we're going to copy when we want to copy that. So we're going to copy that. And we, where do we want that? We want the criteria. So our criteria is going to be sheet dot range. Where is our criteria? N2 through N3. N2 through N3 is where our criteria is located. We want to copy that. Copy to range colon equals. Where do we want to copy that to? Dot range. We'll take a look at that. I believe it's P2 through V2. So again, N2, our, our actual criteria is going to be here, N2 through N3. Our results are going to go through P2 through V2. So that's where we want our results to go. P2 through V2, our results there. And uh, we also want unique. And I don't, unique is okay if it's false. Unique equals false. So there we have our advanced filter. Now we need to determine if there isn't any data. If there's any data, we just need to exit out of that. And what that's going to do is prevent any issues. So if the first we need to determine the last results row using column P. Last result row equals dot range P and then 99999. Dot end XLF. Dot end XLF dot row okay last results row if last result row 
is less than three, then go to no data. And then we'll just mark the information down here, all the way down here. No, actually we need to do it above the application because we need to reset all that no data right here. Okay, so we've got that covered. We're going to exit out, go to no data in case there is any data. So assuming that there is data, we now want to run a loop. It's going to be a little bit different. We're going to change this to results row. We're going to go through, we're now looping through the results. For result row equals three to the last result row. We're running a different loop. The loop is through our results. But where's the product row? We need to define the product row. That's important. Product product row equals dot range of v it's now column v and what and the result row dot value why is that let's mark that as product row product row so the product row is here it's now in v it's now going to be here so the product row is going to tell us what row it is and then we know what row to update d and the product row is where we would be updating it which is going to be the same so but we need to, now the product row is just different so now we can do if range b in the product row equals product type we don't need this anymore because we're already running our advanced filter so we don't need that anymore so we can just remove that and say range d in the product row equals the current value plus the change number so we can update that right there so it's basically the same we don't need that if then statement anymore because they've already our results are already filtered we're still basing it on our results right here all right back into the code we also need to update this it's now next result row all right let's take a look and see how those changes handle up and back into the update and let's click update and we see now it's 0.84 pretty good let's run it again 0.82 okay so it's about the same for right now but it's a much quicker way so let's put in five advanced advanced filters 0.85 how can we get that's even quicker six let's try even quicker all right let's try seeing what we can do is if we clear some of the formatting formatting can cause slowdowns and we've got some formatting here what if we clear all of the formatting we've got uh, conditional formats and we've got number formats so let's just try that I'm going to there and I'm going to clear the formatting clear formats so we still have the raw data but the formats are the same and now I'll go back into here and click update all right, 0.58. Now we're under a second just by clearing all the formats. Again, 0.58. So 0.56. So clear formatting. 0.58. So we're really moving along just fine. And of course, there's another one. We also have the ability uh, to save this in a different format. Right now, we're looking at about. 10 megabytes on this 10 megabytes when we have larger workbooks sometimes saving them as xlsb binary format can also make it faster and also make it lighter if we were to do that file save as we're going to use a xlsb format xlsb save that and now let's take a look at first of all let's take a look at the size in xlsb six five so it's much less six and a half megabytes now on this file and it may just be slightly faster at 0.63 so not quite it didn't really help the speed but it definitely it's, a, it's still the same but it's definitely a lot lighter so that helps so it's about the same speed but xlsb is a great way to make things lighter and of course if you have a larger workbook save as xlsb that's a great way to make things lighter and possibly faster no improvement on the time let's just put in the same seconds but we're still under second point let's do point five eight all right now we've got all of the great speed techniques like speed and lighter let's take a look at completing this application and getting all of the functionalities that we really want in there what are those well what i want to do is i want to filter by this but what if it's all what if it's all text i want to i want to make sure we run through all of them if it's all types i also want to be able to change this from percentage to decimal and i want to change this from increase to decrease so to do that we just got to make a few updates to the code so let's see how we would go about doing that first thing we want to do is we want to add some dimensions to our our particular sheet so then we want to know the change direction change direction and we'll do that as string 
because I want to know if it's going to be negative or because I want to know if it's going to be negative or positive. So that's really important. We've got the product type. We have the product row. So we're good with that. And let's add define the change direction now. The change direction direction. And then we can put in this, we can just copy and then make the update to the range accordingly. And the change direction is going to be, I believe, in G4, G4. So we can change that over to G4. So we know the direction, increase or decrease, change direction. So now we can make a decision based on that. We also, of course, we have the product type. But what if the product type is all what I want to change I want to basically I want to run an advanced filter but if the if it's all types I want to I don't want I don't need a criteria this is our criteria but if it's all types we don't need a criteria so we can use an if then statement for that if product type equals all types then what then I want to run the advanced filter else run the normal advanced filter so here's our normal advanced filter with criteria and we'll copy and paste that and just remove the criteria and add a few lines of code so we can copy and paste this advanced filter but remove the criteria and one thing we also want to do is if there's no criteria we also want to remove that named range criteria from the named formulas here if we take a look in the formulas we will see a name manager we'll see that there's a criteria I want to remove that through VBA basically just deleting that so we can do that with just a line of code so here we would put in sheet we're already on sheet 3 so dot names criteria Dot delete and if it doesn't exist for some reason if we've already deleted it, it's going to return a bug so what we'll do is we'll put on on air go go resume next and then on air zero on air go to zero so it resumes on air zero okay so that means just in case it doesn't exist. so what this is going to do let's put this here uh, on all types and then else on specific types on specific so what that's going to do is that's going to run a criteria based on no criteria. So it's going to use all, basically all of them. We could also just run a for next loop. It would be just as easily to run a for next loop on the existing data. But this way we, we have less lines of code on this. And it's about, it's still less than a second. So it's still pretty, pretty quick. So we're good, good to go on that. And so this is going to determine the last row here. We already have that. Let's take a look at how well that performs. So we have all types. So it's going to be longer because we're looking through every one, but it's not going to be as long as the 16 seconds. So let's click and update on that and see how long when we go through every single type. All right, and that's just four seconds. So that's pretty good compared to the 16 we had before when we were using that. So we had, now we're basing it on all 100,000. All 100,000 are in the results. So that's pretty good. Clicking on that, we're going to see just under five seconds. So that's a nice addition there less than less than five seconds to go through all 100,000 as you can see in the results we also we have we have the results of all 100,000 so that's with all the records in an advanced filter pretty fast pretty fast so that's pretty good but when we add a specific filter and then we click update we're gonna see it's much less now it's just 0.61 seconds so we're still in the range even with that updated code even with that updated if then statements we're still 0.6 we were 0.5 so it only shaped added on just a tiny fraction of it in that this case 0.59 so we're almost the same even with that if then all right good so now what I want to do is I also want to I want to increase it or decrease based on this and I want to add a percentage so let's add those lines of codes so that we can increase or decrease the sales amount by either a percentage or a dollar amount and uh, whether it's increase or decrease on that so we can add in those lines of code and take a look at that okay so what we can do is we can start out with an if then statement I want to know we've already defined the change direction so we can make the update what I want to do is I want to update the change number either negative or positive based on the change direction so if change direction equals decrease then it equals negative then change number 
equals, but it's just going to be equal to minus, equals minus change number. Number. Okay, so that all that we did is make the negative. So we've got that covered, and now what we need to do is simply just update our our sales price, our update based on an if then statement. So based on a percentage or based on a dollar amount. So we can do that. We have that here. If and basically that's F4 that we're focused on. F here's F4. F4 if it equals a dollar sign, then do something. If it equals a percentage, then do something else. So if dot range f4 dot value equals a dollar sign then do this otherwise do something else else do something else okay so if it's a dollar sign we can add it now this is adding it but remember this is going to be a negative number if it's on decrease so that is going to work well it's going to be on decrease so if it's a negative number, it'll automatically be decreased. So we're good to go negative or positive. It's going to work properly. Now, what if it is a percentage? Well, if it's a percentage, it'll be a little bit similar, but we just have to make a few different modifications. D and the product row is what? D and the product row equals D and the product row plus, plus what? The change, parentheses, change number. And we're going to divide that by 100 times whatever is in D in the product row value, times whatever the D in the product row. That's it. So that's all we're going to be doing. So basically, if it's a percentage, we're going to be adding that percentage. And of course, this is going to be negative if it's if it's a negative, we're decreasing. So this divided by 100 is going to give us a percentage. So for example, if it's 10, it's going to be 10% multiplied, or negative 10%, multiplied by the amount, and then we're going to add that. So if this is going to be a negative number, if it's a decrease, so automatically it should work properly. And we just add end if, so we've completed our if and if. So we have if it's dollar sign, if it's, let's just put in if, change by percentage by percentage okay so we have that go okay this is sheet one let's update that because that's sheet one we're still on sheet sheet one let's take a look let's run the code here click update we're going to decrease by five dollars okay six three seconds all right 46 that looks right let's just add another 15 onto that plus 15 and then run that down so mustard now we have mustard, it's $15 above. Let's decrease by $5 again. Take a look at it and uh, see how the price has been affected. Okay, it's dropped down another $5, perfect. Let's uh, increase it by 10%, 10% increase. And click, and let's take a quick look. So it's gonna increase by about $5.25. 25 cents here it's going to update that it should as soon as we click update click update ran at 6.4 and it's increased to 57 perfect all right so we've got that covered we've shown you a few different ways to increase using manual calculations that saved us a great amount of time screen updating a bit disabling events a bit named variables did save us as well we use advanced filters that saved us a lot of time as far as clearing the format that also saved us a good amount and of course saving xlsb actually saved us as far as the application size seven great ways to speed up and make it smaller your excel application i hope you have enjoyed this training of course i really appreciate it. if you can subscribe if you have not yet go ahead and click that subscription as well as the notification bell and that way you will get brand new videos each and every Tuesday. Also, if you have not yet, please uh, check out the links below. I've got some amazing applications, including a 100 application zip file, all of my best applications, 100 of them for just $37, as well as the amazing 15 hour dashboard course. I think you'll really love that. We've got hundreds and hundreds of students that are graduating from that and doing amazing work with some fantastic jobs that they're getting for fruit the freelance community. So I would appreciate that. Have a great day. Thanks so much.